So we just received a ton of new information on Borderlands 3 via a jam-packed release date announcement trailer and damn guys, it's at our doorstep. There's an absolute ton to unpack, including the official release date itself, character abilities, bad guys, new environments, and unfortunately, what seems like an Epic Store exclusive deal. Before we start, I'm giving away a console of your choice. All you have to do to enter is follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. If you want to chat to like-minded individuals and talk games and Borderlands 3, be sure to join my Discord, 17,000 members and counting. First and foremost, I don't want to waste your time. Most of you are here for the release date, so here it is. In the proper format, the 13th of September, 2019. Not long now, guys, rejoice, as we will have something to play before Broketober. It seems like the leak was correct about the date and about the potential Epic Store exclusive deal, sadly enough. I didn't want to believe it because it was leaked on April Fool's Day, but I guess I should have. So the assumption is Borderlands 3 is going to be, at the very least, on the Epic launcher. Looking at the release date screenshot, we see the Epic logo, but not Steam's, which alone is damning enough. But Randy Pitchford, the guy behind the Borderlands series, took to Twitter before this trailer to say, Okay, Take-Two has exclusive publishing rights for Borderlands 3 and makes all decisions regarding price points, territories, distribution, and platform partnerships. Please direct all inquiries regarding any of those topics to 2K. We are just the talent. That in itself makes me think Gearbox was gearing up to shift the blame of this decision. I think it's pretty safe to assume that Borderlands 3 is, as of right now, going to be an Epic Store exclusive. Just like Metro was early in the year, Division 2 was recently, and The Outer Worlds is going to be at release. I don't know how to feel about this. I can see the reasoning behind this move. The Epic Store provides the developer with larger cuts of sales, taking only 12%, whereas Steam takes 30%. That 18% can really count when you're talking millions of dollars. Then, if the developers want, they can pass the savings on to the people, making for a fair market. But is it really fair? Is it encouraging choice? Well, we don't have a choice when platforms and developers negotiate exclusive deals. Metro, Division 2, and The Outer Worlds, all massive releases, are not on Steam. This means that those that would have preferred to pay a little more to play on the platform of their choice don't have a choice. That means that some people will avoid the game, meaning that the 18% extra cut wouldn't have mattered to the developer in the long run. Mostly though, it makes for an anti-competitive market. At any rate, without more information, I can't jump onto the bandwagon. I personally don't mind too much what store it's on, but I completely understand why others will. I also understand if you couldn't care less. Tell me what you think in the comments at any rate. For what it's worth, 2K's decision aside, myself and the team at Gearbox have a very keen interest in cross-platform play. We believe in multi-platform support as it's a prerequisite and Epic's leadership with cross-platform support is helpful to our interests there. We can take solace in Randy's statement that he would prefer Borderlands 3 to be a multi-platform supported game. However, it is unlikely. He did state before that those decisions are handled by the publisher. I don't want to spend any more time on this as we have a bit to cover in terms of what you may have missed in the trailer. So digging right in. Let's start with the characters you can choose. Mose, the bot jock, is your typical soldier class that we're used to in the other installments, except with a twist. She can phase in a bear mech that she automatically pilots. We see this in the footage as well as the fact that it can be upgraded to let a friend jump in the gunner seat at the top. I'd imagine this combo would have to be fairly powerful to warrant sacrificing using your sweet, sweet loot. If we freeze frame here, we can see the mech firing what looks like mortars. Now, it's entirely possible that it's something behind it, but I doubt it. Educated assumptions now suggest that the bot will have multiple game-changing upgrades that can be applied to it. Now, we see the siren getting in the gunner seat of the mech. This is our first look at the HUD inside the mech. It seems the gunner seat will be a third-person view and Moe's will be in the first person. Critting seems like it won't be that hard with spraying two miniguns and a giant cannon. It's unclear if there'll be split-screen co-op just yet, but I highly doubt it. Last, we see the mech without the cannons. Instead, it has another set of miniguns. There is no doubt this is another customization option that you will get with it. I wonder if there's going to be any non-mech-related upgrades. If you're looking for the gunner-type experience, Mose is going to be your girl. Next, we have Flack the Beastmaster. Flack is all about controlling beasts of Pandora and having them help you take down baddies. Well, probably more than Pandora now, actually. 
Sadly, we don't see much on Flack with the new footage. This was definitely going to be my main, so I would have loved to see more. What we do see, though, is a unique Alpha Skag. This Skag looks a lot more badass than the Skag we saw in the last trailer, which leads me to believe that the leak that said each pet will have their own set of upgrades was true. Perhaps as you upgrade your pets, they get cooler and cooler looking, which in itself makes me super excited. There are beastly love hearts coming off the Skag too, which makes me wonder if there's a feed or pat mechanic to heal your pets. It wouldn't be too out of place in this day and age. So if you're looking for a pet base class and a cool as hell outfit, Flack is your man. Next is Amara the Siren. Amara will be your up close and personal character in Borderlands 3, using her siren powers to bruise up the enemies. We can see that with her summon multi-fist kind of attack that slams the ground, dealing damage in an AoE. Later on we see her using a force palm to push enemies to their death. What is cool is that it seemingly uses a physics engine, a first for any skill in the Borderlands series. It reminds me of the skill in Rage, and I had a lot of fun with it there. Honestly, this skill alone makes me take the siren off my not interested in playing list. In the next screen, we see that she's firing a gun while the siren hands are active, meaning that when you activate this ability, it's a duration based buff. My assumption is that the leak was correct and it's similar to Bricks in that it gives bonuses to regeneration and damage. In the next clip, we see her summon a siren illusion of herself with the multi fists to attack something off screen. So far, it seems like she has at least three different skills. This is a solid confirmation that there's more than one skill for each character in Borderlands 3. If you're looking for a melee bruiser type physics based beast, Amara is your woman. Zane the Operative is last and he strikes me as the rich Bruce Wayne, James Bond like option. He has multiple gadgets that he can employ during combat, including creating a hologram and summoning this drone. It's unclear if the drone will act like a pet following Zane around and attacking with him, or will seek out targets and then disappear like Bloodwing did for Mordecai the Hunter. What we do know, however, is if we freeze frame right here, the drone will fire from its side mounted guns. I hope this drone is actually a powerful timed or single use ability and not a pet. As the Beastmaster already has that pet role and I want Zane to have that cool gadgety punchy feel, Batman like tool for every situation. Speaking of Batman, check out Zane destroying his ass right here with this slide. As you guys know, sliding has not been a thing in Borderlands, which leads me to believe that it either is now or Zane can do this as a special ability. Choose Zane if you want that quirky infiltrator type character that gets by on Guile. Overall, I'm excited for the characters and what they are bringing. It seems Gearbox is doubling down on the idea that there needs to be more character progression and they need to have even more skills and individuality. So let's talk about biomes next. For those who just saw my review for Borderlands Game of the Year Enhanced Edition, you'll know that one of the things I commented on was that you do spend a lot of time in similar environments. Borderlands 3 seems to be addressing that, with standard wasteland Pandora feeling areas, swamps and bayous, desert cities, techno futuristic cities, carnival type towns, fortresses and more. The ambience was always important to Borderlands. You have to feel alone in the wasteland or alone with friends. All of the environments we see so far have that feel. Even the city which has an odd eeriness to it, sort of like Blade Runner. If we stop here, we see a sign for the Holy Broadcast featuring Mouthpiece. If Wasteland games have taught me anything, this could be a radio host and we could be getting some kind of radio feature to keep us company during the game. Think 3Dog from Fallout 3. The most memorable moments in that game and New Vegas were doing things to specific tracks and music. It has a profound effect on the immersion of a title, so I really hope this is the case. We see fire coming from atop the skyscraper here. Will you be able to check it out? Will we be able to explore this city? Well, in the next shot, we see the crew driving an energy bladed out vehicle through the streets, so this confirms that the biome is playable. Imagine robot enemies and private armies around military policing the city. My theory is based on the sign you see here saying you should seek shelter. And well, the enemies I'll be showing you very soon. If you look closely, you'll see each shot of the city in question is taken from different angles. It looks absolutely massive. Now we've got a glimpse of a vehicle before, but let's take a look at what was shown off. First is this tire-like contraption similar to that vehicle in, well, the episode of South Park. You guys know the one. You can fit your mates on here, but it seems to do just fine with the solo player, firing the twin cannons at the front without a gunner. Next, we see the animation to switch from the passenger seat to the gunner seat. The siren does a frankly OHS breaking flip to the seat, ready to fire those missiles. 
Next we see just how modular the Outrunner is. The Siren has gone spray paint crazy and made the legs, which have been modified, blue, and the body, which has also been modified, pink. The roll cage and the bolts, green. Clashing colors for what most certainly will be a clashing vehicle. Most notable is the giant cannon on his back. Here we have some more split screen action. The more I see this, the more I hope there will be some damn split screen because if so, it may convince me to get it on console. Anyway, the gunner fires a missile while the driver has control over the machine gun. The next scene we see another heavily modified outrunner that catapults an explosive barrel at the enemy. These have to be more damaging than most weapons because of the sheer size and the difficulty to fire. I'm loving the variety of choice we have with even our rides. Speaking of variety, let's circle back to the Cyber Scythe-like modified Outrunner. What the heck was this? Is it cosmetic? Does it add bonus ram damage? How is this loadout fair? It has missiles on the back, machine gun on the front, and well, the blades. Perhaps the further you get in, the more you can do with your rides. Maybe you need to find the parts to add to the vehicles, or maybe you can upgrade with points that you earn in the game. I'd love a vehicle-based separate progression tree of some kind. Do it, Gearbox. Now comes the bad guys. No good game is complete without the opposite force to propel you into the gameplay. In this case, check out the variety. We've seen the Calypso twins and I have high hopes for them. Robot arm, check. Male siren tattoos, check. Badass coats, check. A cape, check. No capes. <laughs> no protagonist is truly complete without a great antagonist. Handsome Jack will be hard to beat and I doubt we'll see another Vass, but I'd be happy with less. First, we see a what looks to be a Children of the Vault bandit ziplining without the harness down the line to attack the player. Will enemies have reactionary AI letting them use the environment to their advantage, or is this just a pre-programmed action of some take? I really hope the AI is getting a drastic upgrade because fighting bandits I foresee as being quite a large part of the game. Next, we see the giant robot that I mentioned in my reveal trailer video. This one with the exhaust port crotch weak point. Well, it seems like this enemy will be found in the city area which we mentioned before. It seems to be able to fly in from the top and ambush players. Then we cut to this weird mandible lion thing that's carrying an extended mag SMG. This looks an awful lot like one of the pets that Flack can have as seen in the original trailer. If you look closely at it too, you can see that it's carrying a pistol. So perhaps this isn't an enemy and instead an upgraded version of this pet. However, this is in the enemy section of the trailer, so it's possible that there is a bad guy version of it too. Either way, I'm excited for a pet lion bug that you can equip with your hand-me-down weapons. Hell yeah. Next we see some Crimson Lance soldiers, or what looks like Crimson Lance soldiers, doing push-ups. Well, it seems to be an idle animation. Have you ever just chilled beyond the enemy sight and see what they do? It's fun. A lot of them have idle animations. Next looks like some kind of King of the Arena type enemy with his giant energy cannons and truck-like exhaust wrapping around it. I'm imagining a rage state where it's low health, going red and spewing smoke from the exhaust pipes. Then we have the adorable midget psychos. No Borderlands would be complete without them, however there seems to be multiple models of them. One stocky, one slimmer, and more to come. Then we circle back what was shown in the original reveal trailer as well, the Children of the Vault Soldier. He is looking badass. Another shot of the robot in the city-like area and another shot of the T-Rex-like skag mouth beast that shoots fire. This is my favorite by far and I hope you can tame it as the Beastmaster. I said there'd be more midgets, didn't I? Well, this one is carrying what looks to be an anti-ship mine with you suck written on it. Right next to a wall with love hearts on it. Hey, if she sucked, you wouldn't need the bomb, my dude. Then we have a tattooed up midget, and clearly he is the most dangerous of them all. Just look at those tats, they channel his inner demons. So on different worlds, you'll see things like these chickens, well, chicken, cute raptor creatures. No doubt they run in packs and they will try to swarm the player. Next is this bouncing big brain dinosaur amphibian thing. No, no idea what to make of it. Here is a shot of the team taking on one of the robots, which also confirms you'll be fighting in the city area inside buildings. It's hovering so perhaps its jets are used for a big attack, but it remains to be seen. Next we have an armored out fire dude, the complete opposite to the ice dude that we saw in the reveal trailer, which confirms my theory that this guy changes his suit to do different elemental attacks. We can see right at the end that he changes from fire to ice. Perhaps resistances will be a bigger deal in Borderlands 3, or doing the right elemental type damage will be needed to kill these kinds of enemies. Then we have a shot inside the Children of the Vault Church. It seems like followers were turned into crystal right at the front, no doubt due to one of the Calypso twins. 
the price of worship, I, I guess? On the stained glass, we see the mural of them both casting their blessings to their followers. I just want to mention the robot again. In the reveal trailer, we saw it alongside what seems to be private soldiers of the area, so expect this group to be the primary enemies in the city biome. Look up there, is that a midget? Hell yeah, I can't wait for this game. Now, no Borderlands will be complete without loot showers. A billion different guns are in Borderlands 3 in one way or another, but what is the coolest thing about this trailer? Well, it shows that some chests can randomly proc loot explosions. At the end we see loot raining from the sky, so I assume that's a console command of some kind, but the other times it's from opening a chest. I desperately want this to be a feature as well, because we know how important loot is in a game like this. Let's say you play for 50 hours, get one gun every second, that would be 180,000 guns during your playtime. That is a long ways off from 1 billion, and I doubt you'll get a gun every second. So Gearbox, keep the loot showers in the game. Let's finish with this, Claptrap being magneted away by the enemies. Now, now it's personal. Thanks for watching guys, I enjoyed making this video and I hope you were entertained. If you were, please consider dropping a thumbs up and a comment as it helps immeasurably when it comes to YouTube's algorithm for small channels like mine. Don't forget to follow my social media accounts to enter the competition and if you want to keep up the chat, my Discord's the place to be. Thank you again guys and I'll be back soon with more Borderlands.